Hello everybody, welcome back and we're going to be reading from Galatians chapter 5 today from the MEV. So, let's get straight in there. For freedom, Christ freed us, or has set us free. Stand fast therefore, now the word stand fast there means to stand firm, okay, and to be strong, to stand strong, to stand your ground. Stand fast or stand firm therefore, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And as we've been speaking about um, the Galatians, we're getting brought back into trying to keep the law of Moses and circumcision and everything else. And as you've been following us, you already know what that's about. <clears throat> that's what Paul's referring to there. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. I testify again to every man who is circumcised that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You have been cut off from Christ, whoever you are, that is justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit, by faith, eagerly await for the hope of righteousness. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith which works, works through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him, that is God, who calls you. A little yeast leavens the whole batch. I have confidence in you, through the Lord, that you will not think otherwise. For he who is troubling you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. Brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offence of the cross has ceased. I wish that those who are troubling you would castrate themselves. You brothers have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use your liberty or freedom to give an opportunity to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For the entire law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed by one another. See, as Christians, we just keep the law, we, we keep all the laws of God through the one commandment, and that's to love our neighbour as ourselves, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. And so therefore we don't need to try, we don't need a list of things to uh, try to keep. You know, we don't put a list of commandments up on the wall and think, right, we've got to keep all these and make sure we're doing that. If we love our neighbour, then we won't steal from them, we won't cheat we won't harm them or hurt them. We won't, um, we won't sin against them if we love them. Verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are in opposition to one another. So you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. See, as it says here, these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. And we live in a generation, and it's this attitude creeps into the church as well. Uh, just do what makes you happy, do what pleases you. Um, if it feels right, do it. And if we walk in the Spirit, as we're going to see what walking in the Spirit is about, then... We won't be trying to satisfy the needs of our flesh and the desires of our mind. Uh, verse 19, now the works of the flesh are revealed. Which are these? Adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, carousing and the like. Now I would encourage you to do a word search, okay? It would take too long to go into all these things, but what I recommend that you do is get these verses from verse uh, 19 about the works of the flesh and look them up in your translation of the Bible, okay? And then look up what the word actually means, okay? Because some of these things here, I forgot what they mean. Uh, lewdness, I forgot what that means. 
carousing, can't quite remember what that exactly means. Uh, if I was to look it up right now, then I'd know. But that's your work. That's your homework to do, as it were. To look up what them words mean and to consider whether you were practising these things. Um, I warn you, as I previously warned you, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I've read, um, I've read uh, some commentaries on this particular part and read uh, Bible teachers commenta uh, commentating on this verse. Those that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, it doesn't say those that done, but those that do. Now, do is a present tense word. That means that you're doing it now. You've done it, you're doing it, and probably will do it in the future. Uh, one translation... Uh, or a translation of the word means to practice. Now, to practice means if you're practicing something, say you're practicing the guitar, um, then what you're doing is you're going out of your way to do it and even to try and become better at it. Okay? So, a person who practices adultery and sexual immorality and, and, and all these other things, they are going out of their way to do it. Okay? They are choosing to sin. And that's what it says here. Those that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we've got to ask ourselves an honest question. Are we practicing these things? Because if we're practicing these things, according to what Paul said here, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. And we can, we have to take him at his word. We, we should not risk the chance that we can say, well, God loves me, he understands, and I pray, and I still can't stop doing it. Well, we can pray that we'll stop doing it, but actually it doesn't really say, in the, in the, in the New Testament at least, uh, that we should pray that we'll stop doing it, or pray that the, that the temptation will go away. We pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We can pray for deliverance from it, um, and ask God to help, but it's actually up to us to not do it, okay? So when we get tempted to sin in these particular areas, in any other area that is sinful, then we need to consider, am I doing what I can to stop doing it? Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, signifying that following him would be painful. It would take sacrifice. And so if, you've, if you're sitting there thinking, well, I've prayed and prayed and prayed and God hasn't delivered me from, you know, pornography, for example, or, or, or something else. I'm waiting for God to deliver me. Well, he, you're wasting your time waiting because he's, he's going he's gonna to deliver you by telling you not to do it. And then he would say to you, get rid of your, stop going on those sites. Just stop doing it, you know, just choose not to do it. Um, if your doctor says to you, oh, you've got a bad heart and, you know, you've got high blood pressure and everything, what you need to do is stop uh, eating the uh, full English breakfast or eating those greasy, that greasy food and, not, and don't exercise, yeah, and not exercising. It's no good saying, well, I asked the doctor to help me and he hasn't. Well, he has. He's told you what to do and now you need to do it. And you may sort of think, well, this is a bit harsh. Yeah, that's right, because it says in uh, Proverbs that faithful are the wounds of a friend. Okay? So I'm saying this as a friend. I'm saying this as a brother in Christ. Just get rid of the stuff that makes you do these things, right? Cut them websites off and, and whatever else is going on, okay? You have to choose. You will be held accountable to God. As long as you're on this earth and you're doing that, you are not going to be in the will of God. You're going to be out of the will of God. You cannot expect your prayers to be answered. Um, because you're not doing those things which are pleasing in God's sight. It says in, in the letter of John, John mentions in one of his letters, I think it might be one, two or three, John, one of them three, where he says, and we know that he hears us when we, when we pray to him because we ask those things that are according to his will and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, I'm not saying that we can't make mistakes and we can't slip up. But slipping up isn't going out of your way to switch the porn channel on or whatever, or going on to your fans only site. Okay, that's not a mistake. That's actually going out of your way to do it. All right. 
So those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and self-control. Self-control, see? Against such there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit, see, is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. The fruit of the Spirit is in us. We have self-control. So we don't need to pray for it. We have faith. We don't need to pray for it. We have goodness, gentleness, love, joy, peace, and meekness, and, and, and everything else. All them things are already inside us. We don't need to pray for them. We've already got them. All we need to do is use them. Okay, letting them manifest through us. Those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be conceited provoking one another and envying one another. Conceited is to be arrogant as well, so for a person to be arrogant, provoking one another and envying one another. Notice that uh, verse 24 says, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts, those who are Christ's. If you are Christ's, then you will crucify the flesh. Okay, well that's uh, chapter 5. Uh, we're going to be coming back for tomorrow for chapter 6 and uh, I pray that you'll take these words to heart and that, um, you know, I, I do this myself, okay, I do this myself. I sit here before God Almighty and say that I do these things as well. So I'm not preaching one thing or teaching one thing and then walking off and doing the same thing that I've told you to do. I can't teach this if I'm not doing it, okay, I can't teach you the Bible if I'm not practicing it. That's hypocrisy and it's and it's uh, it's not acceptable. So there we go. God bless you and see you in the next chapter. Bye bye.